Welcome to Bio 100, Fall of 21. This is your introductory, introductory lecture. It gives you information on assignments, how to pass the class, and how to find things on Blackboard. I'm your instructor. My name is Diana Davis. You can call me Professor. You can call me Diana. You can call me Ms. Davis. I'm pretty flexible on that. My pronouns are she and her and I am a first generation college student. I had to work my way through my undergraduate degree and it took me seven years to get my bachelor's. You can contact me by email. My email address is didavis at northshore.edu. Make sure you put that I between the first D and the second D. If you just email D Davis, you're going to get Donna Davis. She's a nice woman, but she's not a biologist and she can't help you with this class. I try and get back to students within 24 hours during the week. So that's Monday through Friday. If you send me an email Friday at 11 p.m., you're not going to get a response until Monday. If you need to talk to me directly, I'm happy to set up Zoom meetings, either with individuals or with groups, to talk about the lecture material, study strategies, anything you need. Bio 100 is called Current Topics in Biology. If you need to take anatomy and physiology, this is not the biology you should be taking. You should be taking Bio 101. If you want to major in science, you should be taking Biology 105. If you're going into the health fields, you probably need 101. This is really for students who are not going into science or into any of the health fields. So if you're going into computer science, if you're going into business, if you are an English major, if you're undecided, this is a good place for you. This class is designed to help you understand the major concepts and theories in biology. How, do bi how does science work? How does biology impact your life? We're going to talk about cell theory, which is important because cancer is all about the cells. We're going to talk about germ theory, diseases. I think we all know that we're dealing with COVID-19 right now, and so that's kind of important. The theory of heredity, genetics, the theory of evolution, and we're going to talk about ecology and climate change. Climate change, of course, is dramatically impacting our lives now. Because this is not for science majors, it's not a prerequisite for anything, we can be flexible. If there's a question you've got, something you want to know more about, let me know. We can change up the syllabus. We can change up the topics that we're talking about. And we can talk about things that you've always been curious about. You will need a textbook for this class. The textbook is called The Story of Life by Sean Carroll. The ebook is available from the publisher, Norton Publishing. It's about $15. Last time I looked, which was earlier this year, there is a link in the Read Me First folder on Blackboard. You're going to need reliable internet access preferably from a computer. You're going to struggle with some of the labs if you're trying to do this on your cell phone. You may have to go to campus and use one of the labs, one of the computer labs on campus for if you're trying to complete this class on your cell phone. And you need to be self-motivated. So because we are doing this remotely 
and asynchronously, which means we have no scheduled meetings, you're going to have to motivate yourself to get everything done. I strongly recommend you develop a schedule of items to complete that works with your availability. So things tend to be due on Wednesday and Sunday. Most of the material is due on Sundays. So if you work Friday and Saturday night, you might want to try and get it done on Thursday. Try not to get too far behind. If you turn in an assignment late once or twice, that's you can usually catch up. But if you consistently turn things in on time, catching up then becomes a real problem. Communicate with me, please. If you have problems with the content, if you're having problems with how to study, if you're having technical issues, or even if you're having issues outside of school that are interfering with your ability to finish this class. I might be able to help out with some of these things. You do want to spend a good bit of time every week. We have discussion boards. We have these narrated PowerPoints. We have quizzes. We also have readings and labs and assignments. Depending on the rate you work at, you might be spending a lot of time on these. Hopefully you're going to be spending less time than I've got listed here. Finally, I have study tips that can be found in Blackboard under the Read Me First file, Getting Started, Are You Ready to Start Studying? The class is divided into modules. So we have one module for each of the major theories in biology. These are split over multiple weeks. All of the lecture materials and assignments for that week are posted on Monday. So you've got to make sure that you accomplish all of the assignments for each module, which will be the reading, the narrated PowerPoints, participating in discussion forums, either a lab or an essay, the reading review, which are critical thinking questions about the reading, and of course, there's a weekly quiz. The lecture material is presented on narrated PowerPoints. We have two options for how you can watch these. You can go to the class Dropbox and just watch the PowerPoints. But I also upload it to YouTube as a video form that you can watch. The links are available on Blackboard under the lecture materials that are posted for each module. Lecture outlines are uploaded. Again, in each module, they'll be found in the lecture materials page. So you can look at them. The narrated PowerPoints tend to run between 10 and 20 minutes. There tend to be several of them every week. Lectures are posted within their module each Monday and they will stay posted for the remainder of the course. So how do we find things? This is a screenshot from when I taught this in summer of 21. This is the home page. If you look over here to the left, you can see announcements, the Read Me First page, which has a lot of really good information. You should make sure to check that out. Course information. Again, there's a lot of information in there. Slightly different material that between these two, you will see modules. So what you will see this week, you'll have module zero and it will have this week's date. Next week, we will have module 
A. Then we'll have module 1B, but you're always going to have the dates from the Monday of the week through the Sunday of the week. Then here we have the discussion boards. I do expect students to fully participate in the discussion boards. They take up about 10% of your final grade and it's not that hard to get a complete grade for those guys. Down here you will find your grades and you will find a help button should you need it. Now, if you go to the course page and you don't see this little menu off to the left, instead you might see this blue bar. If you see this and you don't see that side panel, put your mouse about halfway down the screen and a little box will pop up with an arrow on it. When you click that box, it will pull open the side menu. If you're having trouble, especially with technical stuff, you can email me. I may not always be able to fix it, but it's a good idea for me to know that you're having those problems. You can also contact North Shore's Blackboard Help at bbhelp at northshore.edu or as I showed you on the last screen, the help on the menu to the left of your Blackboard screen. You can also find tutoring at tutoring at northshore.edu and it is available virtually. If you have a disability, please check out northshore.edu slash disability. If you have essential needs, if you're having problems getting enough food, getting housing, if you've got mental health problems, go to the NCSC, hmm, go to the North Shore website, go to the search box at the upper left, type in help, and there is a link called here to help, which will give you information about resources available both through the college and in the community. You should also look at the announcements page on Blackboard. We are doing the mobile market on the Danvers campus this fall. The mobile market is free food. It's mostly produce, so fruit and vegetables. You do have to sign up so that they have an idea that you're coming to pick up some food, but you can get, I think it's 20 pounds of food free. So it's a good deal and the food's good food. It's not, you know, the stuff that they throw out in the dumpsters at the back of the grocery store. This is good stuff. Very, very important. I work very hard to make my classroom welcoming to all students. Now, with an asynchronous online class, I can't see what you look like. So I don't know a lot of this information about you, but even if I do, I try very hard to make my class welcoming and equitable, regardless of race, ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, disability, or any other criteria. If you feel that other students, or especially if you think I am being discriminating and making the environment less welcoming, please let me know as soon as possible. Discrimination is not okay in my classroom. Okay, now, how do you do things? So, you want to submit writing on Blackboard. So you're submitting an essay or you're submitting a reading response. You can submit it in a several different ways. You can type it right into the submission box. 
You can attach it as a Word document or you can attach it as a PDF. So if you're using a word processor that's not Microsoft Office Word, see if you can have a Save As option that allows you to select PDF for the format, especially if you're typing on a tablet or your phone. Those usually have proprietary uh, word processors, and I usually can't open those. So it's important that it be in a form I can open. This week, if I can't open it, you get another chance, no problem. After that, you're getting a zero if I can't open the file. So make sure you submit it correctly. The other thing that is critically important is that written assignments must be in your own words. There is a plagiarism checker in Blackboard and I use it. Plagiarism, which is using someone else's words without giving them credit, will result in a zero that you cannot drop and you will be reported to the college. This applies to all written responses. No second chances with plagiarism. If you aren't confident in your writing skills and you feel like maybe English is your second language and you're worried about that, I am you're you're going to get a much better grade if your writing is not what your English teacher might expect. As long as I can understand it, I'm pretty flexible about that sort of stuff. I'm not an English professor, but plagiarism, I'm really, really strict about. One of the things that we have in this class is we have a final project. Sometimes I'll call it the project. Sometimes I'll call it the capstone. It is due December 19th. The topic must be pre-approved. So you have to submit your topic at the latest November 26th. Pretty much anything in biology is acceptable. You can talk about diseases. You can talk about most organisms, although I don't let you talk about mammals or penguins. Um, I've, I've learned that those kinds of projects don't tend to uh, go very well on those topics. I've got some suggested ideas. You're welcome to use those or anything else or reach out to me if you're like, well, I like lizards, but I don't know which lizard might be good. I can help you with that sort of stuff. The format, you have options with the format. You can do a paper and that's what a lot of students do. That's fine. You can also do a recorded presentation. You can write and perform an original song. You can write a graphic novel. Suggest something else. The format has to be pre-approved. You have to let me know what format you're doing but you do have options. I do require sources, but I'm not finicky about the format as long as I can find the source. So if you're doing all your research online, send me those web pages. The final project is worth a good portion of your final grade. We have discussion boards. You have to complete at least 10 of them. Now, to get full credit for each discussion prompt, you have to submit your posts on time, use complete sentences, communicate clearly, and if you are 
replying to another student, you have to actually advance the conversation. So you can't just say, oh, hey, that's a good point. That's not going to count as your, um, as part of your discussion. The discussion boards are about 10% of your final grade. We have weekly quizzes. Questions will be multiple choice, short answer, true, false, a mix. The length will be between 10 and 20 questions. The material comes from the lecture, the reading, the videos. It's primarily fact and concept based. How well did you understand the material? And it's open note. It's worth 15% of your final grade. The first quiz submitted is the one that will be graded. So you will have, you will see that you can retake a quiz. That is available in case you have technical problems. So if your internet goes out in the middle of the quiz. Otherwise, it's going to be the first one. The lowest quiz grade, of course, will get dropped. This week, you have two quizzes. One is what I'm calling the introductory survey, which is all about you. It's to help me get a feel for what you guys are taking this class for, what your interests are, and that sort of stuff easy grade. And then we have a quiz on the material. The reading reflections. This is looking for critical thinking about the readings. To get credit on these, submit the assignment on time. Demonstrate that you read and understood and thought about the material and write an organized response in complete sentences. There are 12 readings. You have to complete 11 for full credit. Each additional missed reading assignment brings your grade, your reading reflection grade down by a total of eight points. The reading reflections are worth about 10% of your grade. This is a lab course. Now, we're only going to have eight labs this semester. You have to complete seven of them to pass the class. Your lowest lab grade will be dropped. Now, if you only complete seven, the one that's getting dropped is the one you didn't complete. Labs can uh, make up about 20% of your final grade. We also have some essays. We have three essays. You'll have your choice of topics. These should be about a page or 250 words long. There are details and a grading rubric on Blackboard under course information. If you submit a 250 word essay that, you know, you just kind of did a half-assed job, you get a 75% on that. But you then gain points. Look at the rubric to see the details. Essays count for almost a third of your course grade. Each one of them counts for about 10%. And to thank you for sitting through this relatively long lecture, hopefully this is the longest one all semester, I leave you with a picture of the kittens that I adopted during quarantine. These are Fidget and Nutmeg, and they are a hoot and a half. Welcome to Bio 100.